I'm going to show you how to make a medicinal extract called a tincture. Now, tinctures are really useful because what they do is they extract the goodness and they concentrate the goodness in herbs. And you can tincture any medicinal plant. So whether it's the leaves, the roots, the berries, the flowers, the seeds, as long as you've got the correct part of the plant that's used medicinally, then you can tincture it. So if you've been to the health food shop and you've bought echinacea drops, that murky brown liquid is a tincture. And all it is, is the herb that has been steeped in alcohol for a couple of weeks and strained off. And what, what you're left with is a very concentrated extract called the tincture. And alcohol is very, very good for this purpose because it's a solvent, so it's good at extracting the goodness into the liquid from the plants and it's also a natural preservative so tinctures keep for years and years and years so you can build up your collection of tinctures over the years by making different things each year. So I have a variety of things to show you and um, <clears throat> here I have got some freshly harvested haws from the hawthorn tree Crataegus and I'm going to show you how to make hawthorn tincture. I also have some lemon balm tincture and a couple of other tinctures that I made earlier in the year. So there's some lemon balm and here's some red clover. So flowers, leaves, haws, so the fruit. And here I have some nettle roots that I've harvested um, freshly and I've washed them and chopped them up and we're going to make a nettle root tincture as well because it's made just slightly differently from the other ones. But we'll start with the hose because they're very nice and easy. You take clean, dry jam jar and I've washed the hose here. You can see the hose here. Now just remove any stalks. So the same way that we did for the hawthorn chutney, just snap the stalks off with your nail. It's very easy to do or, or use scissors, but it's, it's very, very easy to do that. So that's it. So they are, and discard any of them that look past their best. But other than that, pop the hose into the jam jar. It's lovely that medicine making is so easy to do at home. Most people have empty jam jars or honey jars lying around. So this is a really nice way to use them up. So there we are. Don't they look absolutely beautiful? Perfect amount. So now all you do is you take some alcohol. So you're looking for sort of alcohol that's about 40% proof. So vodka or brandy um, is, is um, usually what's used at home. So I have some brandy here and all I'm going to do is pour it on top of the hose. Make sure that they're covered. So do you see the hose are covered? There we are. Now what will happen is <clears throat> some of the hose will start to float up to the top. So um, just keep an eye on it and sort of shake it every day to cover the hose. Uh, but now all we do is we pop the lid on, give it a wee shake and don't they look absolutely beautiful? Um, so that's the hose and what you do is you leave them out of direct light somewhere just nice and dry. Um, so in the cupboard or in the hot press or the airing cupboard is a good spot. Leave them for a fortnight. And what happens is, as you can see, here's some I made earlier and the colour has come out of the hose and into the, um, the brandy and now it's ready to strain off. So I have here some lovely clean muslin and a sieve and a jug. So muslin um, might be the hardest thing to get hold of out of all the equipment that you see on the table here. Muslin you can get from a fabric shop. If you don't have a fabric shop, then if you go into um, the supermarket, if you go into the baby section, then they sell these squares of muslin. It isn't the most economical way to buy it, but it is quite often the only place that people can find muslin these days because fabric shops are quite rare, depending on where you live. So now I'm just going to strain this 
through the muslin, in it goes. And the hose then can just go onto the compost. Look at the colour of that, isn't it beautiful? Give it a squeeze to see if you can get any more liquid out of it. There we are now, that's our lovely sort of ruby red uh, hawthorn tincture. So what we do now is we pour it into a bottle. A funnel is a handy thing if you have one. So into the bottle. Whoops, Daisy. There we are. And just label your tincture with the name with the name of the herb and the date that you've made it. And um, I usually write on the label whether I've used the fresh herb or the dried herb because you can use either. Tinctures are usually better made with fresh herbs but you can use dried herbs as well and they can be very nice too. And, uh, but do remember to put a label on it because one bottle of murky brown liquid looks very like another and you need a really well trained nose to be able to distinguish between them if you haven't put a label on. So that's our Hawthorne tincture. So that's the usual way that tinctures are made. So it's the same method for the lemon balm, which is here's the fresh lemon balm here. And that's the lemon balm that's been infusing in the brandy. And here's some fresh red clover, and that's the red clover that's been infusing in the brandy. So again, after two weeks, you would strain those out and bottle them the same way that we did with the haws. But I'm going to show you how to tincture a root because these need to be simmered slightly just to soften them up. So it's slightly different methods. So I've got here the nettle root. So I've put the nettle roots into the pan. Here we have our lovely tinctures. So hawthorn tincturing. Uh, Hawthorne fully tinctured and ready in the bottle and nettle root, lemon balm and red clover.